Hello, everyone. I'm Graham Ledger, and welcome to the Daily Ledger, our cover story. A tale of two governors. Ron DeSantis respects the federal constitution and his state constitution, which means he respects the rights of residents of Florida. DeSantis is taking measured, rational steps to reopen the Sunshine State. Why? Because the evidence shows that there has been a giant over-response to the Wuhan coronavirus, and because he wants to end this needless suffering. However, 3,000 miles of the West, even though the coronavirus numbers are similar to Florida's, the governor of California is doing the opposite. Gavin Newsom is doubling down on his unconstitutional edicts. He's extending shutdown orders and cracking down on anyone who defies him, including a county supervisor who happened to call in and challenged the authoritarian maniac during one of his daily propaganda sessions. I'm actually with um, Supervisor Wagner in Orange County right now doing an interview with him. They unanimously voted yesterday to approve reopening businesses with guidelines in place. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. I'm actually in the middle of the interview right now. And, uh, and uh, Supervisor Wagner, what you say? <laughs> Can't help you with the interview. Let me, uh, let me, let me just. Uh, what we were saying is the Orange County order <laughs> satisfies Orange County. The sheriff will not come and ticket you, but the state orders and any local city orders remain in place. We have six indicators that will determine uh, our decision making. It won't be on the basis uh, of uh, well political. Uh, considerations. It won't be on the basis of pressure. It won't be on the basis uh, of what we want, uh, but what we need to do. And what we need to do, from my humble perspective, is listen to the public health experts, uh, listen uh, closely uh, to what's happening with the virus. I will say about Orange County, it's important. Uh, the supervisor is well aware of this. Uh, Orange County is the fourth highest number of people of all 58 counties hospitalized in the state of California. I'm concerned about that. So we have a lot of work to do to keep people healthy, keep people safe. That's the data. Uh, and the data uh, leads our decision making. Uh, again, I appreciate all the hard work of supervisors up and down the state, city council members up and down the state, the incredible work that mayors are doing as well. And I appreciate the spirit uh, of the question. Ah, see, Newsom, like all good dictators, does not like to be challenged, does he? He wants people to simply comply. And if they don't, they will pay the price. But Newsom cannot carry out his attack on liberty without the help of his local Gestapo, like in Los Angeles. Newsom has a very loyal lieutenant there by the name of Eric Garcetti. Together, Mayor Garcetti and Governor Newsom are crushing commerce in the nation's second largest city. But their draconian orders are also crushing lives. And you know what? Some California residents have had enough. Joining me now from San Rafael, California, constitutional and election law attorney, Mark Moisier. Mark, the governor is clearly out of control. From a constitutional, from a liberty, from a freedom, from a Bill of Rights perspective, this guy is clearly out of control. And he does not like it. You see the look on his face when somebody challenges his authority and his nonsensical crap that he spews out every day. Excuse me, but that's all it is. He does not like it. But he has this Heimrich Himmler little person in Los Angeles by the name of Eric Garcetti, who happens to run the nation's second largest state. So between the two of them, they have a literal stranglehold on the economy, but they also have a stranglehold mark on liberty. And you are seeking to undo that through the courts, injunctive relief, right? But, but there are people suffering right now. And to a degree, I don't know if Californians really know how bad they are suffering because they're like the proverbial frog in the soup and the, the heat is being turned up very, very slowly. Here's the question. Is there any way to expedite these legal cases that you're bringing on behalf of Californians who understand what's going on here, their liberty is being crushed, and their lives are being wiped out by these radicals? Is there any way to speed this up? Well, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, we have now had filed six cases against the governor in the state of California over the, about the last 18 days. And our, all these are asking for the courts to immediately rule 
Uh, one of our cases is already on its way to the Ninth Circuit, and we're asking for expedited hearings there. And so we are asking for temporary restraining orders. We are trying to get this in front of the courts as fast as we possibly can. We got uh, arguments going today before the California Supreme Court. We got arguments before federal judges on Monday and Tuesday next week. So everything we are doing is we are asking the court to drop everything they have and take these issues up immediately. You filed, as you mentioned, a flurry of lawsuits. Let's look at just one of them. Um, this is Gondola versus Newsom, and it's making headlines, some headlines, uh, in the once golden state. Uh, effectively, you're representing some small businesses, and you're suing Gavin Newsom and Mayor Eric Garcetti for relief to allow these people to operate. And this goes to the crux, Mark, of what is deemed essential and what is not deemed essential. So the governor in Sacramento, in his big old mansion there, says, you know, that that, that guy who repairs shoes in this, in this little town in, in, in the middle of California, he's not essential. We're going to shut him down. But to his family, he is essential. Well, he's not only essential to his family, but he's also essential to the economy. Because when you shut him down, you're also shutting down the revenue that's coming to the state through sales tax. Right. You know, what you're doing is you're taking people off the ability to make their own income and you're putting them all on the public rolls, which is, you know, we're already stretched pretty thin as it is. So when you look at the United States Constitution and what this is violating, it seems to me it's violating the Fifth Amendment uh, due process, along with the takings clause, correct? As well as the 14th Amendment, where is the equal protection under the law? And at some point, the Commerce Clause. Are all of these in play in your arguments? Uh, the due process, equal protection, takings are all definitely very strongly argued in our uh, case. The the Commerce Clause is more going to be coming down through the AG's office, and it's less applicable uh, in a private uh, lawsuit against the government. You also have a lawsuit. One of the ones that you mentioned uh, is you're suing on behalf of folks who want to maintain their religious liberty in the Golden State, the once Golden State. Imagine that. And you, so you're representing, I believe, three pastors and a, an Obama judge. I'm sorry, but it is an Obama judge ruled at, at least temporarily against you. But now you're on your way to appeal this one. Well, I'm going to say he didn't rule. He legislated from the bench. All right. You know, and he, he created a rule that was completely contrary to anything that the United States Supreme Court or any federal judge. He basically created a brand new standard of law of how we're supposed to act in an emergency, giving the governor even broader powers than any court has ever done. And so, yes, we have filed that appeal to the Ninth Circuit, and we are moving the court at this time for an expedited hearing. And the good news about the Ninth Circuit, you know, it had a history uh, until very, very recently of just being a rubber stamp for any kind of anti-constitutional liberal ruling, but not anymore, right, Mark? The complexion of the Ninth Circuit has changed be because of President Trump? Yeah, over the last year, we've actually started to see some very good decisions come out of the Ninth Circuit. It's been very interesting to watch that maybe the Ninth Circuit is not the Ninth thir Circus anymore. Maybe it is actually becoming a much more rep reputable branch. Yes, there are still some judges in there that you got to be concerned about, but the, the dynamic of the entire Ninth Circuit has clearly made a shift. All right. You've got one more lawsuit I want to talk about. And I think you just filed this one yesterday, and it, it's an attempt to stop ballot harvesting uh, in the once golden state. And of course, uh, this is in play right now because not only is there an election coming up in November, but there are the special elections, right, Mark? So this is actually something that is very, very timely, even though the November election is many months. Who knows what things are going to look like <laughs> in November? But there are some special elections right now that pertain to this in terms of the stay-at-home orders, right? Yeah, in 10 days, we have a special election to replace the, uh, to fill the Katie Hill seat. Uh, you remember her sexual scandals a few months ago. And what we have found out is that the Secretary Padilla has basically said it is safe for you to, for ballot harvesters to operate. And we go, wait a second. It is not safe to have polls open where people can go vote, but it's perfectly safe for you to go and uh, collect a, a stranger to come to your door and collect your ballot. And we said this does not make sense, you know. So we filed a uh, complaint. We basically say, so it's not safe for you to go visit your mother on Mother's Day, but it is safe for a ballot harvester to go visit your mother on Mother's Day to pick up her ballot. 
the hypocrisy, the political hypocrisy uh, is dripping. Are, are you hopeful that one or all of these are going to wind its way to eventually getting some sort of restraining order, either temporary or permanent? I believe all these cases that we are bringing have legal merit and, you know, we will continue to push them through the courts until we start getting the judges to start reining in this tyrannical governor in the state of California. As long as they use the United States Constitution and, quite frankly, the California Constitution as their guides, then, well, it should be open and shut cases. Should be. Underline should be. Mark, thank you.